What's up guys, Leon here, welcome back to Tesla on Mare. As you may have noticed, I have a big weakness for Tesla cool gadgets. I went shopping again. I know it might be not that creative to make a video about a device I didn't build myself, but this way I think you can also learn a lot. Can you still remember the video with Jay from Plasma Channel? Creating plasma flames with MOSFETs? That was the birds of the dead MOSFET army. Anyway, that's over now, be curious. On one of my countless shopping tours on AliExpress, I discovered this device. With a price of about $20, it's quite cheap. I bought the product with my own money, it was not sponsored. Can you imagine that the delivery took only 7 days? Just unbelievable. The device is in this small package. Let's see what's inside. We have a couple of jumper cables, a connector, two coils and the main module. Well, that's really tiny. This is how we're going to proceed now. We test the module and increase the voltage until the MOSFET breaks. Then we take the device apart, look at the circuit and replace the MOSFET with a better one. So in the end, you should see a nice big plasma flame. That sounds good, right? To run the module, we just need to connect two wires to the connector, hook up the coil to the main module and flip the switch. The circuit should operate at 36 to 48 volts, but I think it will start oscillating at a lower voltage. At 13.6 volts it starts to oscillate. The frequency is about 15.34 MHz. Now let's turn up the voltage. At a voltage of 15 volts, the flame can be ignited. Cute, isn't it? Now let's go to the maximum recommended voltage. That would be 48 volts. At this voltage a current of 3 amps flows. So the little device now has a power of 144 watts. Unfortunately the breakout point is not optimal. A plasma flame is damn hot. For this reason I got myself a tungsten rod. Tungsten melt at around about 3422 degrees Celsius. I think that will be enough. Oh, and tungsten is very solid. With a hacksaw you have no chance. With a dream mode it goes already better. That's it. I quickly print a mount so that we can attach the coal on the module. That should improve the performance. At this point, many thanks to the company 3 Jack, which kindly sponsored spare parts for my printer. Now my printer prints perfectly again. The store, which is by the way the best 3D printing store in the world, as well as the new parts I have linked you in the video description. So back to our module. That's around about 50 volts. Sixty volts. 70 volts and broken. Oh, that was very strong. Now we disassemble it. To do that, we just have to remove the screws. The primary coil is plugged on and can be removed easily. Really smart. There are almost exclusively SMD components on the PCB. I'm pretty sure that the same circuit was used that Jay and I have been working with. A voltage is applied to the gate via this voltage divider. This voltage is variable and can be regulated via P1. The Zener diode protects the gate from a too high voltage. C1 and L1 create a low pass filter. By applying a certain voltage to the gate, the circuit starts oscillating. The oscillating circuit consists out of L2 in combination with C3 and C4. This is a so-called serious resonance circuit. By resonance transformation, the resonator L3 is excited to oscillate. At the top, a potential builds up so high that we have a discharge. The plasma flame. Very roughly explained. Let's see which MOSFET was used. What? An RFP250? It won't be hard to replace it with a better one. I'm also not sure if it's good to run the van with a higher voltage than 48 volts, because 
This one is only designed for 24 volts. I think we will build the circuit on a different heatsink. We don't have to win a beauty contest. I replace the RFP250 with a 50 and 30 which can handle a higher drain source voltage. I'm now reassembling everything so that we can do some tests now. I'm really excited. The construction is the same only that we use a new heatsink and a new MOSFET. At the same time I'm looking at the drain source voltage so I know approximately when the limit of the MOSFET is reached. I think this module is very well tuned. Let's see if it runs in zero voltage switching mode. For this we measure the gate signal and in parallel the drain source voltage. The MOSFET should switch whenever there is no current flowing in the oscillating circuit. That looks good. Let's get to the test. Wow, that was not bad for such a small module. Plasma flames are so beautiful! If you prefer to build such a device by yourself, be sure to check out my tutorial on it. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, leave me a comment down below. And then guys, we will see us in the next video.